Laser sights enhance and maintain your accuracy in a time of crisis, preventing tunnel vision and allowing quick target acquisition in awkward shooting positions. Crimson Trace, making laser sight standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, Tom's talking guns and fun at the FTW Ranch with Ruger's Mark Gurney. Plus, shooting and training with competitive champion Bruce Pyatt. Call in with your questions, comments, and range reports now to 866-TALK-GUN. And now, here is Tom Gresham. Well, howdy. Glad that you could be here. Yeah, I'm glad that I could be here. Where am I? <laughs> I'm in Kansas City. Well, just outside. I'm in Lenexa, Kansas, actually. Uh, having some fun with some relatives and uh, doing the show from the great Midwest. Having a ball. We've been talking about guns a fair amount. Uh, and we'll be talking about guns for the next oh, three plus hours right here. And you could be a part of that, of course. All you have to do is grab your phone and give me a call. It's the easiest way, honestly, is just to dial Tom Talk Gun. I'm Tom. That's what we do here. We talk guns. Tom Talk Gun. If you like numbers, what's wrong with you? Uh, 866-825-5486. Yeah, right. Tom Talk Gun is an awful lot easier. A lot of things going on in the news, of course. We'll talk about that. It's also that time of year when people are starting, well, I hope, I hope, I hope you're thinking about going out and sighting in, getting ready for the hunting seasons, also doing a lot of uh, shotgun shooting. Yeah, I know it's hot. Suck it up, buttercup. You can do it. You can do this. Hydrate. Try to find some shade. Get out there and do some shooting. Go out early. Beat the heat. Uh, a lot of folks are, are taking advantage of the fact that this is National Shooting Sports Month, as designated by the National Shooting Sports Foundation. I've been putting some pictures out on Twitter of uh, people shooting, and people are posting their pictures. A lot of fun. And even pictures of, like, just cool gun pictures. Yeah. Yeah, a buddy of mine yesterday was posting pictures of his truck online. That's cool. I like that. It's not my thing, but it's his thing. I can see posting pictures of guns. Why wouldn't you? Well, well, there might be a reason not to. Here's a story. Let's see. Uh, At a Florida university, a lacrosse college lacrosse player was told by his coach in June that he had to choose between the team or posting his hunting and firearm pictures online. This is how the text ran from the coach going to the student. You want to play lacrosse for PBA, that's Palm Beach Athletic University. You won't post pictures of your guns and stuff. That's simple. You want to continue to post this? You don't play. Hmm. So the pictures, I'm looking at them here. One is, uh, of the student after a duck hunt. He's got his ducks with him. And another is he is holding a handgun that is in a holster. It is a holstered firearm. Uh, Not doing anything unsafe with it. So the student, God love him, a lot of strength there. The student, this this kid, he responded to his coach and he said, you know, I did nothing wrong. And if I have to choose between lacrosse and my constitutional freedoms, I'm going to choose my freedoms. Fortunately, the university jumped in. They responded formally to the student's complaint and said the student's pictures did not violate school policy and that they had spoken to the coach about this issue. There are, and I will go ahead and anger some teachers here, but if you are an experienced teacher, you've been around a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There are people who get into teaching so that they can push people around. There are people who get into positions of authority so they can bully and push people around and have their say and impose their will on people. It's a perfect situation when you are a teacher and you are you have either younger kids or even young kids and you have the power of, well, if you're a coach, you're either on or off the team or you have the power of grades or the power. Or sometimes it's just the power to denigrate demonize, embarrass a student in class. Way back, I knew a uh, great young woman in high school. She had an instructor 
who started yammering about guns and the guns this and guns that and spouting off stuff. And what he didn't realize that this uh, young lady, Nicole, she was actually the manager, even though she was a high school student. She was the manager of the local shooting range, had been working there since she's probably 12, maybe 11 or 12. But no, she was actually the manager of the local shooting range, big shooting range. So she said, well, wait a minute, that's not right in class. And he said, well, yes, it is. Da, 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 da. And she said, no, your facts are wrong. And he basically shouted her down and told her to shut up. Nicole was not one to suffer fools gladly, very much like this lacrosse player. So she went to the principal. And the principal backed up the teacher with this nonsense and, and basically lies that they were spewing about gun deaths and unsafe guns and on and on. And Nicole's saying, no, I, this is my world. I know this. This is not factually correct. You're simply wrong. And they basically told her, you, you need to be quiet, young lady. That really wasn't her style at all. So she went home and told her dad. Definitely not her dad's style. So <laughs> uh, the next scene as we uh, you go to the next one, it's at the school board meeting. Oh, yeah, we're running it right up the flagpole. We're going as far as it'll go. And at the school board uh, meeting, the teacher lied about what he'd said in class. And the principal got handed his rear end to him by the school board. And then the head of the school board, at the end of it, comes over and talks to the dad, to Nicole's dad, about uh, what kind of scopes and what kind of rifles he should be getting. So it worked out pretty well, but you have to stand up to bullies. Why? Here's a question. Why are bullies bullies? Answer, because they get away with it. And when do they stop being bullies? When somebody punches them in the nose, figuratively or literally. I've done it twice in my life, punched them in the nose, and it stopped them. Literally, not figuratively. One punch. Yeah, I was a kid. It was you know, in school. But it's amazing. People who are used to pushing people around, when somebody pushes back hard and knocks them on their rear end one way or the other, they kind of stop doing that. And that's what this lacrosse player did. That's what young Nicole did. And that's what I would encourage you to let your kids and grandkids know you can stand up to authority figures. You do it in a respectful way. But understand that you can be right even though you're younger. They can be wrong even though they're older. I know you probably have examples of that in your life or have heard of, of that. But most, a lot of kids are told, no, no, just you know, go along, get along, don't make waves. You know, well, that's okay. I mean... But when they're wrong, they're wrong. And you can say in a polite way, uh, I don't believe that's correct. I believe the facts actually uh, say the exact opposite. There's nothing wrong. You know, that's not personal. You're not saying, hey, you're a poo head or something. It's, uh, you know. But we need to have strong, intelligent young men and women who have the strength to do that sort of thing. Thank God that we do. And we did then. We still do. Uh, Obviously, the lacrosse players said, you know what? If being on the lacrosse team means I have to give up my constitutional freedoms, I'll pass on lacrosse. I I love it. It's a great story. Tell you what, we've got a lot of other great stories coming up here. A lot of things going on. Washington State's investigating the NRA's insurance plan. We also have the ATF changing a classification of an AR-15 upper, and this may get an awful lot of people in trouble. They may have what now appears to be a firearm that may be in violation of the law. We'll we'll figure this thing out. It's it's a mess right now. And if there's something on your mind, you've been taking somebody out to the range, you've been doing some shooting, you bought a new gun you want to tell us about. Range reports are always appreciated here. 866-TALK-GUN or Tom Talk Gun. We'll be right back. Stand for the Second Amendment with Franklin Armory. Their three-position BFS Gen 3 trigger is one of the hottest products for your AR. 
HK, ACR, CZ, and B and T in curved and straight variations. In position three, fire one round on pull and one round on release. Ideal for both tactical and competition use. Get a 10% discount on everything with the code word gun talk at franklinarmory.com. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. Since 1937, Ducks Unlimited has led the charge on wetlands and waterfowl conservation. Wetlands reduce the effects of flooding and recharge our drinking water. But perhaps most importantly, they allow us to experience what makes the outdoors so great. Band together to rescue our wetlands. Tactical professionals who put their lives on the line every day depend on Surefire. Since 1979, Surefire has designed, machined, and assembled the finest flashlights, weapon-mounted lights, hearing protection, and suppressors right here in the U.S. Surefire, offering a best-in-class warranty and customer service, and used by more military special operations, SWAT teams, and hard-use end-users than any other brand. Surefire, American-built, American-strong. Visit Surefire.com. That's Surefire.com. It's America's favorite 22 rifle. No matter how, where, or what you like to shoot, there's a Ruger 1022 for you. From the carbine to the incredible takedown models, the tactical and target versions, all Ruger 1022 models have a legendary action and detachable 10 round rotary magazine. Whether you're hunting squirrels or tin cans, there's a lifetime of fun in every Ruger 1022 rifle. See them all at Ruger.com. That's Ruger.com. Well, here's a, uh, a really good example of the True Squad in action. And this is uh, in the Eden Prairie News. I don't even know where Eden Prairie is. I just found this uh, on the web. Uh, I'm guessing probably Midwest somewhere. And it's a, a letter. Really well written letter. It starts off. Uh, Doctor John, uh, Mister John Mallow, offered an opinion column last week, expressing his views regarding the connections between the NRA, racism, and the Second Amendment, and more. He is entitled to those views. The historical record, however, does not support his opinion. And it goes on to basically start off in 1791, and he talks about the Bill of Rights and how it all came about. And it talks about uh, the NRA was founded in 1971, and they had no affiliation with the KKK, although that's one of the myths that the gun ban lobby likes to perpetrate out there. And it, it basically just sets the, the stage. It sets the record straight. It was written by a Mark Kruger, Eden Prairie. He says, incidentally, last line, I am also a Vietnam War veteran, but not a hunter. So, but he is basically setting the record straight on the Second Amendment. Very well done. Uh, Eden Prairie, Minnesota. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting helped out by the staff here. Thank you very much. Um, that's the kind of thing we're talking about with the True Squad. We leave no lie left unchallenged. And why is that? Because, and here's the crux of it. And honestly, it's what's going on with the media, so much of it now. A lie left unchallenged becomes the truth. What do I mean by that? Well, if 90% of the coverage of President Trump is negative, and that can't possibly be true, that 90% of the stories about him are negative, that that what he's doing is wrong 90% of the time, so the coverage is skewed, but if you say it often enough and loud enough, it becomes the truth. And in this case, it becomes in some sense, unchallenged. Certainly, there's some Fox News counterpart, with the exception of Shepard Smith, who should be working for CNN. Um, there's some Fox News counterpart to that. But for the most part, the coverage is skewed. 
this is not a mistake. This is not happenstance. This is not an accident. This is coordinated. If you don't believe me, the media is coordinating to next week, one day, for all media on the same day to publish editorials that are negative about President Trump. They're, they are colluding to all have editorials on the same day because they don't like the fact that the President Trump keeps taking on the media and they feel like they are being harassed. Really? Really? You're doing 90% to 10% negative stories about the president and you're being harassed by his tweets? And so you will get together and collude and put the media together, and it just shows where they are in terms of their agenda. Why would they consistently every day lead with stories that are negative about President Trump? Let's see. Oh, stock market is you know doing record performance. If you have a 401k or an IRA, you have increased your money by 25 to 30 percent in a year or so. Unemployment is at its lowest point in many, many years. Things are looking really good. So you have to find something. And here we go back to, here's what's really going on. They feel betrayed. They also feel foolish. It's one of the more powerful emotions that you can have is embarrassment. I'll guarantee you if you stop right now, you can think back to times when you were truly embarrassed, and it may be 30, 40 years ago or more. You remember embarrassment because it hurts so badly. And the media was so horribly embarrassed when they all said, there is no path to victory. That was the key phrase. Donald Trump has no path to victory in this election. It is a shoe in It will be President Hillary Clinton. The FBI agents, the lovers who are tweeting back and forth, or uh, texting back and forth, and they're saying, you know, I just met with the president. Really? Says uh, Obama? No. Clinton? Says, well, not yet. Okay. Well, yeah, but she's going to be. And so they're embarrassed that they called it. They were so wrong. They were proven wrong. They were proven to be mm, trying to be kind here. The word idiot keeps leaping to mind, but that's probably not kind. Uh, they were enthusiastic in their one-sidedness, in their partisan coverage. And so now they have to do something to say, see, we were right. Yes, he got elected, but he shouldn't have. And the only reason he got elected is because he cheated. The only reason he got elected is because uh, Vladimir Putin was on his side. Really? You guys just going to stick with that? Okay. So that's kind of where we are. We have the big lie thing going on there. And that's why the True Squad is so important. I created this 20 years ago, the Gun Talk True Squad. And the idea is very simple. If you're listening to this, you're a member of the True Squad. You you probably ought to subscribe to our newsletter, which is free. It comes in once a week to your email. Uh, Just go to guntalk.com for that. But once you're on there, we're sending out stories weekly that you can use, things you can use when you're writing letters or making comments online or talking to people or contacting a station saying, you know, you got that wrong. You know that you guys look pretty foolish because you're factually incorrect. And just want to make sure that you're aware these are the actual facts on it. If you leave no lie left unchallenged, you have a chance, certainly not guaranteed, a chance of affecting media coverage. But more than that, even if you're not changing how the media covers guns and gun owners, when your comments appear online or when your letter to the editor gets published, other people see it and you correct a wrong. When you stand up, when you speak up, when you can do it well, and sometimes it's all you need is three lines. And honestly, for some of our people, I'm just going to offer this. Uh, If you have written two pages, throw away one and a half pages or one and three quarter pages. If you can get it into one paragraph, that's best. Two paragraphs max if you want to be effective, if you want people to actually read what you've written. By the way, it was 20-some-odd years ago. I started 25 years ago, at least. I started saying every gun club, every shooting range should be doing charity shoots. Why is that? So we can show. We we are the good guys, okay, and we're good neighbors, but we can show people we are. 
we're doing good and getting credit for it. It's my the thing I like, the definition of public relations that I like, doing good and getting credit for it. Yesterday, I'm out here in Lenexa, Kansas. I drive by Powder Creek Shooting Park in Lenexa, Kansas. We're driving by. I said, pull in there. So we just pull in. Cars everywhere. You cannot find a place to park at this place. They're having a charity shoot for cystic fibrosis. And it is jam-packed, sporting clays. Now, just you know, a shout-out, uh, Powder Creek Shooting Park in Lenexa, Kansas, has been is established in 1949. Let's see here. Look at their brochure. They have traps, skeet, sporting clays, five-stand uh, archery. They do public uh, corporate events. They do youth programs. Uh, you can have a membership, but you can also pay a day rate out there. Again, it is the uh, Powder Creek Shooting Park in Lenexa, Kansas, a big gun talk attaboy for them and whoever's putting on the fundraiser for cystic fibrosis. So what's that do? Well, it makes money for cystic fibrosis, clearly. But beyond that, it establishes that we are the good guys and gals. We're the ones, we're the good neighbors. We're the ones who are doing good for other people. We're trying to take care of anybody we can. And I don't care if you're doing a shoot for, to raise money for breast cancer research or cystic fibrosis or MS or for a firefighter who was killed in the line of duty and you're trying to help out the family or whatever it happens to be. You're doing good, and yes, it is important for us to get credit for it, you know, because we're going to be doing good anyway. But sometimes we forget to notify the media and make sure that we get the coverage that we need. Fortunately, these days, we don't have to depend upon them to send somebody out because they often won't. There actually are some media outlets that have an official policy we don't show up anywhere where we might have to report on anything positive about guns and gun owners. I'm not making that up. Seriously, that's true. But we can go online, and we can do Facebook, and we can do Twitter, and we can do a lot of other ways to get the information out there. And if you're smart, you can still work with the local charity or uh, media and get somebody out to cover it. There are a lot of ways to do it. Good, doing good and getting credit for it. All right, so what's your story? What have you been shooting? What are you thinking about buying? And what's on your shopping list? 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. All right, back with that. Question for you. Chances are, if you're listening to Gun Talk, you are an avid shooter. Not always, not everybody. You may be an avid hunter. You may be an opinion leader, an influencer in today's vernacular. An influencer. In other words, you're you're somebody that people ask questions of. Well, what kind of gun? What should I do? How do I do? that kind of thing? So here's my question for you. Some twenty five twenty five plus years ago, it would have been close to unthinkable for anybody to suggest for deer hunting that someone use a two two three caliber rifle. 223 was the AR-15, the M-16, maybe for varmints. Yeah, we could use them for prairie dogs. They were good for critters up to, you know, 10 pounds. And then things started changing. Part of what started changing is a lot of people started getting AR-15s. <laughs> Talk about your unintended consequences. When Bill Clinton banned, so-called, banned, so-called, it was a so-called ban on so-called assault weapons, okay? It wasn't really an effective ban. And they weren't at all assault weapons. But it was a ban on some semi-automatic rifles that looked scary. And that went on for 10 years. But it caught an awful lot of gun owners by surprise. 1994 is when it went into effect. And an awful lot of people knew nothing about AR-15s. Nothing. I didn't know much about them, and I'll be right, real honest with you about it. 
But when they said, we're going to make it so you can't buy them, I said, well, then I'm going to go get one. Oh, correction, I'm sorry. Then I'm going to go get two. And I went out and promptly bought two of them. It, talk about your unintended consequences. It was Bill Clinton's gun ban, the ban on AR-15s, that created so much interest in AR-15s. People who had never paid any attention to him at all said, well, I, I'm going to go get one. And then when they did, they went out and shot it. And they went, wow, this is kind of a cool platform. This thing doesn't kick much at all. And the design is really ergonomic. And it's easy to shoot and fun to shoot. And, hey, you could actually make these things pretty accurate. Well, once that started happening, people started thinking, well, would this cartridge be any good for hunting? Not just prairie dogs or groundhogs, but deer. So the question I ask you, if you are an an influencer and somebody asks you, would a 223 work well for deer hunting? I say, well, yeah, or well, no. What would you tell them? Um, Interesting question. Is the 223 adequate for deer hunting or would you as a lot of people have said say no i think really the 243 is probably about as small as i would advocate that anybody go 22 caliber versus 24 caliber two hundredths of an inch difference in diameter does it make that much difference i don't know It's an interesting thought. I'm just wondering if someone asks you, well, let me ask you this. Have you hunted deer with a 223? Do you know anybody who hunts deer or antelope or any other big game with a 223-556? If so, how long have you been doing it? How effective is it or not? Give us your report on that. That'd be a range report I'd like to hear. Because, and I'll, let me just say it up front. I have not. I have not hunted deer. I have not shot a deer with 223. Uh, but I would love to get your take on it. Again, our number is 866-TALK-GUN or just Tom Talk Gun. That is one of the questions on the table right now. Also, when I come back, I want to talk to, about a, uh, a video that was just released, a dash cam video of four Pennsylvania State Troopers, two of them. Traffic stop, DUI arrest that went horribly wrong. And you get to watch the video a lot of lessons to be learned from it. Our number, 866-TALK-GUN. For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience. Whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime, setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But do you know you could use more training? Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com That's ShopGunTalk.com Tired of searching the web for the best deals on guns, ammunition, and gear? Download the free Gun Dealio app today for deals and discounts right at your fingertips. Handguns, rifles, shotguns, ammo, optics, lasers, gun safes, targets, gun cleaners, grips, slings, and much, much more. Save money on products you want from the companies you love. New deals, discounts, and rebates added daily. Gun Dealio, available for free in the App Store and Google Play. It's really pretty simple. Your carry gun is a life-saving device. It must be with you. That's what the Springfield Armory XDS is all about. Small enough to carry, big enough to shoot comfortably, shockingly slim, single stack. 
with a 3.3 inch or 4 inch barrel available in 9, 40, or 45. Highly accurate, great trigger, fiber optic front sight for fast aimed fire. The XDS at Springfield Armory.com. That's Springfield Armory.com. All right, back with we're giving away stuff here. Let's see. We're giving away a, uh, what is it? Every safe Fat Boy Junior gun safe. These are really nice gun safes. Uh, this is going to come with the accessory panel and free delivery. Holds up to 48 guns. Also, uh, that's the grand prize. First prize is the Liberty Safe HDX 350 Smart Handgun Vault with biometric entry. These things work great. Uh, they have USB charging ports on it as well. You just go to guntalk.com slash win, and you can enter for a chance to win. Very cool stuff from Liberty Safe. Also, don't forget uh, to go to shopguntalk.com. We have, uh, let's see, new uh, trucker and flat bill trucker hats, uh, T-shirts, DVDs, lots of other neat stuff there, a lot of things going on. Uh, I mentioned this earlier as a story that the ATF is now classifying 50 caliber bolt-action AR uppers as firearms. So what you have is an AR upper, which comes with a bolt, it's single shot, uh, and I guess what they're saying is, well, because it has a bolt, it fires, it's capable of firing just the way it is, so that makes it a firearm, instead of being just an upper on a firearm. So they're sending letters out on this, and the question that is still unanswered is what happens to everybody who already owns these? What happens to people who own other single-shot uppers that go on ARs? The answer is we don't know yet. Uh, this feels like a new interpretation, and it's, it's really a, an issue, a problem, I think, with ATF, well, probably with every agency. Agencies get to make up laws that nobody votes on. When they change a reg- regulation, it is ch- changing the law. Because if you violate the regulation, you can go to prison. And to me, that makes it a law. They'll say, well, no, it's not a law. It's a regulation. Okay. But if I violate your regulation, which nobody voted on, and nobody we voted on voted on, but if I violate your regulation that you just comes out as a letter, I can be sent to prison. We don't have much input on this. It's a, I, it's a thing that bothers me. It just is. So we don't know what this is going to end up being. We'll keep an eye on it for you and kind of keep you posted on, on what's happening. I also mentioned this dash cam video that was just released. This is uh, a couple of state troopers out of Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see, the website is M-C-A-L-L, mcall.com. You can take a look at it there. It's instructive on a number of levels. And I tend to not want to publicly second-guess police officers. In this case, I'm going to make an exception. Because as you watch this, it's a traffic stop. And there are two officers and the guy they stopped appears to be complying until they give him a sobriety test and start to handcuff him. And then he starts to fight him and fight him and fight him. And the fight goes on for two minutes. And they're rolling on the ground and they're shooting with a taser. But before that, the body posture and the conversation from the officers is so casual has to invite the word complacent. They've got a guy that they've stopped. They've got him out of the car. And these officers are just almost ambling around this guy. Not tuned up, not on alert, not being careful. And he ends up getting them on the ground and pulling, I guess, a backup gun off of one of the officers. He goes into his, reaches into his car and they're still yelling at him and trying to shoot him with tasers. And, I mean, it's, for me, the time for firing bullets is long past. Should have been done at this point. This guy ends up shooting one of the officers, uh, almost killed him. They end up shooting and killing this guy. 
But as you watch the video, and I would suggest if you do, first of all, I'm going to give you a warning. Uh, as you might expect, it has language that is not uh, suitable for work and maybe not suitable for family. So don't go click on this with the sound turned up if you're not in a place where the people around you are going to be, you know, be okay with it. But once again, we learn a lot from the dash cam videos and from the body cam cameras that the police are wearing these days. But this one is one of those where you're just looking at it and you're going, wow, you guys really let this thing get out of hand. Here's the thing. And we know this from decades of experience now. If a bad guy takes a gun off of an officer, he is almost certainly going to shoot that officer with that gun. We've seen it time and time again. Someone reaching for an officer's gun has to be assumed to be com- committing attempted murder. He is trying, at that point, reaching for the gun is the same as trying to shoot the officer. If you don't treat it that way, you're crazy. It's one of the reasons that the shooting in Ferguson, people don't understand what happened there. When this guy reached for this officer's gun, he's, he's trying to kill him. Same goes on for you. If someone tries to get your gun, they're trying to kill you. You do what you want to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to react as though they're trying to kill me. Simple as that. Let's go to line four. Denny's with us out of Georgia. Denny, talk about 223 for deer. What do you think? Oh, yeah. It'll take down a deer. Yeah? Yeah. I was uh, a instructor, a marksmanship instructor over at Paris Island, South Carolina in the Marines. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Deer, are, deer have this sixth sense where if it's safe, they're going to hang around. Even if there's a whole bunch of gunplay going on with all these rifles firing and firing constantly, they'll right. just walk anywhere. Yes, well, I've seen we it. Were shooting my time at, yeah, we were shooting at 300 meters, and any time when we see an unsafe condition, a bird, dog, whatever jumps out in front of the range, we're supposed to cease fire. Right. Well, this deer decided to jump out of nowhere at the, fi- uh, at the 50 uh, target 50, and started walking towards the direction of Target 35. So we're yelling, cease fire, cease fire, cease fire. Well, this one kid said, forget that. I'm going to shoot it. And popped him and dropped him with one shot. Ooh. And I think he was like maybe a five or six pointer. Yeah. And I was like, wow. I was like, go get the golf cart. <laughs> we went and up to, around his legs and drove him off the range and continue firing. <laughs> now, And that was actually using uh, military ammo, non-expanding ammo, I take it. Yeah. Just regular uh, 556. Yep, FMJs. How are we doing? All right, thanks, Denny. Interesting report. Uh, on line three, Bob's with us out of Laurel, Montana. Hey, Rob, uh, you've got a thought on uh, ARs for deer. Yeah, I still got a quarter in my freezer from last year. I got a <laughs> FN15, um, and uh, I got no problem with it. It was a nice big bully. It was a four-point. Yeah. What, and, uh, why did you go to that? Uh, you probably, I'm guessing you have experience shooting deer or critters with other things. Why did you go to the AR? Because it's light, and I'm down near 70. Well, actually, mm-hmm. I have 70 now. Okay. And lugging it at six through the woods just ain't my thing anymore. I carried one of them since I was 12. <laughs> so, and, the, uh, so the AR you know, worked I could for shoot you. It. Yeah. And I could make it hit at a long, long range, but most of the shots you hit are about 100, aren't more than 150, 100 yards or 150 yards at that. I'll be darn. All right, Rob, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's kind of hard to argue with a guy who says, yeah, I still got a quarter uh, left in the freezer of the deer that I shot with my AR. If, uh, if you got experience shooting hunting deer or anything else with uh, the 223 cartridge, 223 or 556, I'd love to know about it, 866-TALK-GUN. Also, I'd like to know what ammo are you using, what bullets are you using. Uh, I wouldn't want to use FMJs, despite the report from Denny, but I'd want an expanding book. So what are you using? What rifle, what scope, what ammo, and what's your experience of hunting with a 223? Six talk gun in about oh ten minutes. We're going to be talking about uh, 
a really cool family outing that I happen to be a part of. Uh, with some long-range shooting and some other things going on and uh, talk about some new sales of uh, cool things. Just We've got a lot of news coming up, a lot of great stories. The whole idea of taking the family out to the shooting range, or in this case, may, case, maybe a shooting camp, summer camp with guns. Ooh, I like that. We were talking about that. Let's see. Uh, right now, line four, uh, Ryan's in uh, Amarillo, Texas. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. So two, two, three, or five, five, six uh, for hunting deer or anything else. What do you think? Yeah, sure. I, I I've got a couple of stories for you. I, sure. I really enjoy your show. Um, when I was younger, about forty years ago, I I got a deer with a two eighteen B at about seventy yards with open sights. Uh huh. Um, he ran about fifty yards and fell. And uh, so it's two eighteen. That's just yeah, a even smaller than two two three. With, yeah, twenty two with a little more powder. Exactly. And then uh, two years ago, I got a nice big deer at about seventy to eighty yards with a five five six. I was using a sight mark digital scope, hmm. uh, and one shot uh, dropped. So well, yes, I think the two two three and the five five six are are good deer rifles. What made you decide to do that? Um, uh, honestly, um, we had a couple of other larger rifles with us, and mm-hmm. we were packing up to leave, and that's the only one we had. Um, left out it was the only one that wasn't packed up <laughs> it's the only one that wasn't packed up and this deer showed up in the tree row mm-hmm. and i said oh, okay we we'd already had a deer and a turkey in the truck right. clean, and this this deer showed up and that was the only rifle available and so i uh i i, I well, you know, let me, let, let me, where'd you hit the deer Right behind the shoulder and the lungs. Well, you know, I think that's kind of the secret of why a two two. It's always been the secret of why the two forty three was so good. When people would move from, say, a thirty out six down to a two forty three, I think it's the same thing with the two two three, because it has so little recoil. It's really easy to shoot it well. You can put the bullet in the right place. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I think that's kind of the the whole thing. Is it's well, you don't even think about it. You just press the trigger and put it where it's supposed to go, don't you? Well, well yes. When when we got to the deer, he, he we had to uh, we had to go ahead and and relieve him of his misery, which is ethical. Sure. But he was he was still laying there. I mean, he one shot dropped him. Uh, and and, I, and let me just jump in. I, I I've certainly had to do that after having shot him with bigger things. People say, well, he ran fifty yards. And uh, thank you so much, Ryan, for your call. Um, yeah, he ran 50 yards. I've had, I always figure 50 to 100 yards is pretty much expected, honestly. Sometimes they'll go down, and I've shot them with 30 out sixes, 270s, 243s, 257 uh, Roberts, two, let's see, 7 MMO8s, and a whole bunch of other calibers. And it's a crapshoot. You don't know if they're going to fall down, if they're going to run 50 yards or 100 yards and fall down. And it doesn't seem to matter what it is you shoot them with. So if he goes 50 yards and falls down with a two two three, I think that's kind of the same as with a 30 out 6 And, yes, I've had to dispatch him when I got there as well. Light recoil, light guns if you choose your rifle well, easy to shoot, and now we have good hunting ammo available for two two three. Why wouldn't you? Uh, still going to be looking for more stories. If you are hunted, hunted with or are you going to hunt with a two two three? let me know. When we come back, gun camp. 